Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the latest news from Bahrain Television. The personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, underlined the advanced level of the Bahrain tournament for falcon and hunting. His Highness also expressed his appreciation for the remarkable efforts exerted by the organising committee of the tournament. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa thanked the owners and underlined the efforts of the organising committee which ensured the success of the contest and in promoting and preserving traditional sports and games. The qualifying competitions of Bahrain Tournament for Falcon and Hunting concluded today at Al Sabqa area near Bahrain International Endurance Village with the participation of 1,500 local and regional contestants. It was held for the cups of Sheikh Mohammed bin Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa and Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa. Present were the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Athletic Federation, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, the sons of His Highness Sheikh Nasser and His Highness Sheikh Khalid, President of Bahrain Equestrian and Endurance Federation, Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa and a number of royal family members. Trophies were presented to the winners by His Highness Sheikh Khalid. The tournament was attended by a large number of local and regional spectators. It was also covered by Bahrain Sports Channel. First Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Athletic Federation, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa held a telephone call congratulating the KHK MMA team on qualifying for the semi-finals of the Indian Open MMA Championship. 
The championship is organised by the All India MMA Association under the supervision of the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation on January the 8th till the 10th on the sidelines of Body Power Expo. His Highness Sheikh Khalid praised the performance level of the fighters, lauding the training programmes and all preparations that the fighters went through. He praised the organising committee and the fighters on achieving this feat on behalf of the Kingdom of Bahrain and said that this achievement will lead to further accomplishments. He also expressed delight regarding the performance of the fighters in the championship and wished them further success. Minister of Foreign Affairs Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa participated in the 42nd GCC Extraordinary Ministerial Meeting in the Saudi capital Riyadh. The Ministerial Council discussed the repercussions of the attack on the Embassy of Saudi Arabia in Tehran and at the Saudi Consulate in the Iranian city of Mashhad. The Council issued a statement stressing its strong condemnation and rejection of these infringements, holding the Iranian authorities fully responsible for these terrorist acts in accordance with its commitment to the Vienna Conventions of 1961 and 1963 and international law, which makes it an imperative responsibility to protect the diplomatic missions of states. The Ministerial Council also condemned the blatant Iranian interventions in the internal affairs of Saudi Arabia. This has been highlighted through hostile and inflammatory remarks by the Iranians on the implementation of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to the provisions of legitimacy issued against a number of terrorists. The Council stated that those remarks were an incitement for the direct assault on the diplomatic missions of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Ministerial Council stressed that such acts do not serve peace and security in the region or globally and are incompatible with the principles of good neighbourliness and non-interference in the internal affairs of states as well as respect for its sovereignty and lead to a crisis in stances and ignite more crises in the region. The Ministerial Council stressed the support of GCC countries to with Saudi Arabia and for the decisions and actions taken to fight terrorism and all its forms and manifestations and to prosecute the perpetrators of terrorist acts and agitators, bringing them to justice, praising the efficiency of the judiciary in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, its independence and impartiality. The Council also expressed its full support for the measures taken by Saudi Arabia in the face of terrorist attacks on diplomatic missions in Iran, stressing that the GCC countries will take further appropriate action to address these attacks. Welcoming the categorical rejection shown by Arab, Islamic and friendly countries and the Security Council to these attacks, the Council called on all states, the international community and all regional and international bodies and organisations to take serious and effective steps to prevent such attacks on diplomatic missions in Iran. The Ministerial Council also condemned Iran's continued occupation of the three United Arab Emirates islands, Greater Tumb, Lesser Tumb and Abu Musu, spreading sectarian strife and supporting extremist terrorist organizations, training and financing them as well as inciting them to destabilize the security and stability in the GCC countries. This was recently revealed by the Kingdom of Bahrain, which followed a terrorist plot to carry out acts of terrorist bombing and the arrest of elements of a new terrorist cell that was receiving support from the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and by Hezbollah in Lebanon. The Ministerial Council agreed on an effective mechanism to address this Iranian interference. The Council called on the international community to take the necessary measures to compel Iran to respect the principles of good neighbourliness in word and deed and to stop their activities that are destabilising the region, stop its support of terrorism and non-interference in the internal affairs of the GCC countries and other countries in the region as well, as the non-use of threat or of force. Despite the considerable pressures placed on Bahrain's economy through 2015, as a result of sluggish global economic recovery, low oil prices and regional unrest, Bahrain's industrial sector managed to thrive and even develop strategically into new areas. More now on this story from Daniel Deporto. The average contribution of the industrial sector to GCC economies stands at 10%. In Bahrain, manufacturing SMEs constitute the third largest contributor to the economy after hydrocarbons and financial services. The kingdom's industrial sector has traditionally been dominated by energy projects and upstream manufacturing activities, but the challenges posed by the remarkably low global oil prices seen for much of 2015 have been met by boosting diversification efforts. 
Major inroads have been made into high-value-added and energy-intensive industries, such as metals and petrochemicals, into support industries, like just-in-time manufacturing and logistics, and into digital economy, resource light and knowledge-intensive ICT initiatives. Such 2015 highlights include the upcoming Dragon City retail, wholesale and warehousing development, the international acclaim and uptake of Bahrain International Investment Park, BIIP, and the awarding of the UN International Telecommunication Union Prize for Sustainable Development in ICT to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister. The long-standing paragons of Bahrain's industrial sector have also had a banner year. In August, GPIC experienced its best-ever monthly production figure, achieved without any lost time accidents, and Alba's Line 6 expansion project, approved this year and expected to begin production in 2019, will position it as the largest single-site smelter in the world. The molten metal park, so the aluminium downstream cluster, I think that's been a theme of this year. And so we hope to do more transactions around that, around Alba Line 6. I think that we are uh, looking at the uh, Mondelez, which is the craft manufacturer, um, looking to expand and do a biscuits factory, which would be addition to the BIIP area. So I think that certainly is a piece of um, interesting news that will expand the manufacturing, the food manufacturing. And thirdly, we're very optimistic about what is supportive of that, which is the logistics industry. And I know that you know, after our visit to Germany in, in April, we've seen a lot of interest from German logistics companies, one of which we hope to announce soon. And then China as well with the opening of Dragon City, I see the logistics industry around that. So that manufacturing and logistics is built around, I think, the food industry, the aluminum downstream, and then the logistics around Dragon City. The industrial sector has benefited from some notable legislative changes this year. The logistics industry has been opened up to allow for foreign ownership and access to the Ministry of Industry and Commerce's over 2,000 hectares of industrial land has been revamped. A lot of the lands were just uh, being uh, left idle. People will take the land and never invest. And at the same time, there's a long queue and a big demand for land. And you cannot attract uh, foreign direct investments if you do not have land. So that's why uh, there was more scrutiny on uh, this issue uh, to release the lands that are being just held uh, without return. In addition to taking great strides forward, 2015 has been a year for Bahrain's businesses to consolidate operations. The government has introduced a program of gas price increases for industrial operations and it is hoped that short-term cost increases will be offset by longer-term competitiveness. The best way to combat these increases and utilization of the resource that we have is by enhancing the efficiency of our operations in all industries, in all industries. And I believe there are ample opportunities for the uh, electricity generation, for example, sector, for the aluminium sector, for the steel sector, for the refinery, as well as the petrochemical area, for us to invest in uh, efficiency-driven uh, opportunities and therefore reduce our gas consumption by at least 10 to 15 percent over the next three years so that uh, we can overcome the increase in the gas prices. With the proliferation of manufacturing logistics businesses within Bahrain's industrial sector, export activities and foreign trade have become even more crucial. Bahrain's annual foreign trade to GDP ratio is one of the highest worldwide, with growth rates well above the global average. Major international exhibitions held in the kingdom, such as the Gulf Industry Fair and Bahrain Export Trade Expansion Symposium, support global awareness of offerings, while the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, in partnership with the Economic Development Board, Tam Keen, and Bahrain Development Bank, is embarking upon a major initiative to set up an export development centre to provide advisory services and financial assistance to boost exports from SMEs. In conclusion, despite challenges posed on an international and local level, Bahrain's industrial sector has worked harder and smarter in 2015, consolidating operations and leveraging and building upon existing infrastructures to ensure long-term sustainable development. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto.